Welcome to Section 3, Data Structures and Algorithms, Building a Sorting Application. In this first video, we're going to be looking at an overview of containers in C++. We're going to cover basic arrays, and then the array class in the standard template library, as well as vector, map, unordered map, and queue. So let's go ahead and take a look at some example code. So here I am in Visual Studio with a brief bit of code that I've written to sort of showcase the various features and containers available in C++. Now I should note that this is not an exhaustive look at these containers, but rather a brief glimpse into how they work and how you can use them. So first off are basic data arrays. So these are denoted with these square brackets. And the 5 here indicates the length of the array. Now, these are nice in the sense that they provide an easy way to have a contiguous array in memory, but they're not nice in that they don't check for errors. So if you index an array that is out of range, well, then you're going to run into troubles in your C++ program. And this is actually a very common cause for errors in C++ programs. So if you're using a fixed sized array like this one, it's a fixed size array of size 5, you're actually better off using the standard template library equivalent of array. So to use this, you need the array header, and then you declare an array like this. std is the namespace, the name of the array, or the name of the class is array, and then you have the data type and its size. So one thing to notice about the standard template library classes is that they are all template classes. That's the name standard template library. So what is a template? Well, in C++, a template is the basis of generic programming, which allows you to write code independent of any particular type. So if you recall the types that we've covered before, like int, float, double, so on and so forth, you can even use your own class or structure here. But it basically provides you a blueprint for a generic class or a generic function. So this is advantageous, as you can imagine, in classes like containers, because containers can contain many different types of things. So this template class, in this case, has two parameters, the type and then the size of the array. Now, because this size is declared here, it is enforced at compile time. So this data array functions and can be used exactly like this data array. So you can assign values like so, so on and so forth, and you can access them the same way. The difference is, and this is more safe than this data array. So it's usually, now because this size were something like this, Next, we move on to vectors. Vectors are also continuous memory arrays. And as you can see, they're also a template class. But the difference is that their size can change while being used. And you can do this by using the function called pushback. So pushback, what it does is basically take the value that you pass it, and it appends it to the end of the array. So here, our array has zero elements in it. That's a typo. It has zero elements in it, and then after we go through this for loop, it's going to have exactly five elements in it. So this is useful when you don't know how much space you're going to need or how many elements there are. So vectors are very common in C++ code. They're one of the most commonly used classes, and we'll look at them in more detail later in this course. Next, we have the map class, and a map, in general, is a set of key-value pairs. So you have a unique key, so there can only be one key, and then for each key, you have a value. So in this case, our key is the type integer, and then our value is the type integer. These don't have to be the same, and as you'll notice, map is also a template class. So here we could have int and then float. So for every integer key, or like ID, as you can think of it, we would have a single floating point number. So then when you want to get the value of the map at a specific key, 
you can just reference it like so. Now, this is nice, but one thing to be careful of when using maps is that if you try to read a value with a key that is not in the map, this will return a value, but it may not be what you expect. Now, because there is no one in the map currently, we only have the keys three and four, what this statement right here is going to do is basically create a new default value of float for the key one, and then it's going to return that default value as map value. So it's basically going to call the default float constructor and initialize the value of the new float for the key one and put it in the map and then return that new value for the and put it into our variable here map value. So one thing to be cautious of when using maps of any sort is to make sure that your key is correct. Next we have the unordered map. Now you might be asking why do we have map and unordered map? Well it stands to reason if this one is called unordered map that means that map is ordered and that is actually the case. So one other thing to keep in mind with the map specifically is values are kept in order by key. So everything is sorted by key. So if by doing this, the statement we insert a value for the key one, this moves it to the top of the map. So everything is sorted by key. So the key value pair of one, and then the value will be first, then three and two and four and 1.0, so on and so forth. In an unordered map, the values are not sorted at all. So whatever order you put them in the map, that's how they're going to stay. So in this case, four is going to be first always, unless we change that. Five is going to be second, and one is going to be third. But the same principles apply to this unordered map class as they do for the map class. And again, this is also a template class with template parameters for the type of the key and the value. Finally we have the queue. So a queue basically is sort of like a first in first out buffer, which allows you to push and pop values so that you can perform some action on them. They're more useful in certain algorithms, but the gist of it is that you can add new values using push of a specific type. Again, this is a template class. And then when you want to get the next value, you can get what's at the front, or you can also do back, so on and so forth. So you get the value, maybe you want to do something to it, and then you pop. So when you call pop, it's going to pop the front value off of the queue. So now only the four is left in our queue at this point in the code. So that's a basic look at some of the containers available in the standard template library for C++.